180. Copa yeah. America talk. So I gotta say, <laughs> Messi, you've got the trophy you always deserved. Yep. Uh, 28 years uh, to get it, Argentina. But Messi, from the failing and trying, the perseverance that Messi showed, yeah. I got to respect it. I got to respect it. And the images with him with the trophy, it's unbelievable to, unbelievable to see. But I'd like to have a special mention in the Argentina side for Di Maria. Yeah. Di Maria is the Robin that Messi needed in that mm -hmm. tournament. He was so good. The Paul yeah. too. But Di Maria, I feel like Di Maria is going to be very overlooked as he is in history. The yeah. Di Maria at Real Madrid, the Di Maria I saw at Benfica when I was a kid. Like, what a player. Yeah. What a player. I mean, he has a history of having these these kind of far end of the spectrum uh, showings in really big moments, right? And uh, we always talked about this. If Messi needs a supporting cast in order to win, he was not the best. He was not at his best in the Copa America final mm -hmm. at all, right? And he would be the first to say that. He did manage, you know, four goals, five assists previous to that uh, to get them there. But ultimately, he needed, like, I think you called him a Robin. You made a Batman reference, right? Mm -hmm. uh, he needed somebody. And Di Maria, that pass from, from DePaul, unbelievable. DePaul also had that moment where he set Messi up, and Messi actually bungled it. He didn't, he didn't put it away. Uh, but, yeah, at 28 years, Messi seeing the tears of joy, Neymar seeing some tears of heartache with both of them, like, hugging afterwards for a really long period of time. To do this at the Maracanã in front of, all, you know, not a full, I don't think it was a full field. It definitely wasn't. Mm -hmm. uh, but to beat Brazil on their home soil, their first time losing on home soil, his teammates tossing him in the air. I mean, these are scenes, man. This is amazing. Uh, I'd like to mention this too. You mentioned Neymar. I think Neymar is starting to feel the pressure, the pressure to get the Ballon d'Or. He's 29 yeah. years old. He signed a long-term contract with PSG. And mm -hmm. now we can see the talk was, get me everything you can. I want the Ballon d'Or. I need it. I'm 25, 29. Show me the love. Yeah. And I think he's feeling the pressure because the, he was devastated at the end. I know it's an international trophy and it has a lot of meaning. Yeah. But I think Neymar is starting to think, I need the Ballon d'Or or I'm going to be overlooked in history. Yeah, because it almost, it almost feels like he's... say Ronaldinho is better than him. He right. needs the Ballon d'Or to be better than Ronaldinho. Yeah. It, it, it almost feels like he's uh, he's trying too hard when it comes down to it. I mean, I, I can't think of a more frustrating 90 minutes for uh, such a world-class player to watch the amount of times that he literally was just tanked. I mean, mm -hmm. just destroyed. Like, rip shirt, rip shorts, rip shirt, whatever. And then the other times, he was flopping all over the place. It was like the boy who cried wolf. Right, you, you couldn't tell when he was actually getting destroyed, uh, and, and when he was actually going, you know, for a diving gold or something. Uh, but he is such a, a mercurial player that I just you felt he was going to get his goal, he didn't get his goal, and uh, I, I think he's trying too hard. I, I know it's weird, I'm you know, here I am, backseat fan, right? I have no uh whatchamacallit, I have no credentials to stand on to even criticize a guy as good at football as he is. Um, but yeah, he it feels like he's trying too hard. But that game had everything in it. I mean, it, it, you had ridiculous tackles that in other leagues likely would have been red cards, right? Mm -hmm. You had Gonzalo Montiel playing through whatever his uh, saturated ankle in blood, okay? Uh, you had... Um, Messi versus Neymar. You had the disappointment of Renan Lodi missing that interception that led to Angel Di Maria's uh, goal. Yeah. Uh, you had Emiliano Martinez, you know, picking up uh, Leo Messi and, and holding him in the air at the end of the game. Because we have to remember, Emiliano Martinez did not have a cap for Argentina until like a month ago. So true. So true. <laughs> and he's, he's the best. He's got the golden glove of the tournament, in my yes. opinion. Uh, it, no, it's, it's a fact. And Emiliano yeah. Martinez, the trash talk in the penalties. You love to see it. Yet yeah. Mina was like looking at him. Are we really going through this? And he was like trash talking him so much. And then Messi saying, ah, Dansar, Dansar. You saw that. Yeah. Messi yes. was then provoking uh, the scenes. Like it was really an emotion, a big emotional win 
for Argentina. Yes, it was. Uh, so do you want to go for the team of the tournament of Copa yeah. America? Yeah, we're probably going to have to like run through this. But uh, before we do that, one last quick shout out to Lionel Scal Scaloni, the manager. Mm -hmm. This guy's only 43. I don't think people understand how little of a CV he has aside from his career playing, right? He was an assistant, I believe, uh, somewhere in La Liga, maybe Sevilla. And then he was the assistant for Argentina for a couple years as they were going through a restructuring. And then he was handed the reins. This guy's 43 years old, and he has somehow managed to take all those egos, put them together, and win a Copa America. So I just got to say that. Uh, I'm going with a 3-5-2. What are you going with? I'm going with a 4-3-3. That's, right. that's my traditional tactic. Cool. You want me to start? Yeah, go for it. So at the keeper spot, I think the best keeper in the Copa America, it's locked in, Emiliano Martinez. I agree. Uh, left back, Vinha. I absolutely love him. He's very exciting talent with the Belfred at Palmeiras. Mm -hmm. uh, then my two center backs, the two ce best center backs, in my opinion, the Copa America was Otamendi and Marquinhos. Uh, Otamendi was, he's, he's the heart of that defense, you know, the, yeah. the tackles he does, the moments, the voice, like I love him on the pitch. Otamendi is really, he really stepped up yes. in the Copa America for Argentina. Yes, and he did. at right back, I know he's a right wing back, it's Cuadrado. Okay. I love Cuadrado. So it's Emiliano Martinez, Vinha, uh, Marquinhos, Otamendi, and Cuadrado. Like that's it. My, right. That's my defense of the Copa America. Okay, well, there's a little bit of an overlap there, or a whole lot of overlap. I'm only going with three center backs here. So we've got Otamendi, who, yeah, I agree with you. You know, time at Benfica or time at Manchester City, he's, he's generally ridiculed a, a lot more than he's praised, right? Mm -hmm. Um, so it was pretty amazing to see him step up as much as he did. Uh, but you also have to have Marquinhos uh, for Brazil because of just, hey, Brazil basically walked through the group stages. Uh, we, we're forgetting that. They also basically walked through the, the, uh, the knockout rounds, uh, and then they ran into Argentina. Uh, but my other uh, defense is actually more of kind of like a future play, a center defense, is going to be Cutia Romero, Christian Romero. Um, okay. He didn't get to play as much as I would have liked. I mean, I could have put, picked Thiago Silva here. He was phenomenal as well. But Cuti Romero uh, played when and delivered in the final uh, as best as he most possibly could, coming off of an injury. Uh, perseverance, man. You know, I like that stuff. As you can see, sometimes it's not always about the mm -hmm. footballing for me. Um, so Cuti Romero, o Otamendi, and Marquinhos are my center backs in a 3-5-2. Okay, so I'm going to go for my midfield here. My mm -hmm. best midfield in Copa America, it's uh, De Paul, Casemiro, oh, okay. and Fred. Uh, I like, and Barrios is a special mention I want to do, but I'm going to go Fred, Casemiro, and De Paul. De okay. Paul, I understand why Atletico Madrid got the deal done soon. Because De Paul is a stud. Stud. One of the best underrated players in the world. He's the most yeah. underrated, one of the most underrated players in the world, in my opinion. Watch out. I, I agree. I absolutely agree. And that's why I got him in there. But um, can you say that one more time? Uh, so, Kazmiru, Fred, De Paul. All right. De Paul. That's right. my, the, only, the best yeah, midfielder in Copa America. The only difference I have there is I actually do sub in uh, Wilmar Barrios. Okay. Um, uh, because I think he's, he's unknown. He really is unknown, even though I think he led the tournament in tackles one, uh, in pressures one, uh, he was all over the place. He was kind of like their unsung hero, Columbia. Um, so I really, really enjoy. And I think it's mainly cause he plays for Zenit and, uh, we don't see him on a regular basis that people kind of forget 27. He's going to play a big part for them if they qualify for the world cup. Mm -hmm. Uh, DePaul, who I was just electric in the final, um, in, in a game that was fraught with ridiculous tackles and all over the place, uh, energy everywhere. Uh, DePaul managed to deliver two phenomenal passes uh, and beyond, you know, what else he was able to do. And Casemiro, for sure. Uh, the whole tournament, he's just so consistent and a uh, little shocked they didn't get it done on home soil. Uh, but that's kind of my middle. And then I'll just treat, you know, when we go to the forwards, I'll, I'll add my, my okay. wings slash left and right mid to it. My forwards, I'll keep it simple. I put Neymar, Messi, and Luis Diaz. Uh, okay. I think Luis Diaz like, performed so well in Copa America. And I'm not surprised if FC Porto uh, mm -hmm. are going to get some, some offers there. Because like 
I think Porto is re- is a really good club exploring the South America uh, market. They got James Rodriguez, Falcão in the past, yeah. uh, Danilo, Alexandro, Otamendi. Yeah. Even before he went, he was he went big. He went to Porto. Uh, so Luis Diaz is another player that he's showing why he's so good. Like he's ah oh, fantastic. So my front three, my best front three in Copa America is Luis Diaz, Messi, and Neymar. Okay, I like it. I mean, hey, I, I think we're gonna have a little overlap here, but I obviously have two to add to Messi and Neymar. Technically, left mid and right mid. Uh, but we've basically already said them. We have a very similar 11 uh, across at left mid. We're going to go with Luis Diaz as well. And that's one. I, I had a question for you. You know, why doesn't he start all the time for Porto? Because, man, that was a player that that led Colombia. OK, he was he was up there in almost every stat category with Messi and Neymar. Right. Whether it's dribbles, one goals, he had four goals, uh, scored the last minute winner in the third place game. Um, I mean, he was everywhere for them, and he just looked the part. Uh, and I was just a little I'm surprised that he's not a locked-in starter at Porto. Uh, could be could be a possible transfer move coming. Who knows? Or maybe Porto actually elevates him the way they might have to or want to. Uh, but beyond that, you have Messi and you have Neymar up top over at right mid. Uh, I'm going to go putting him at a, as a mid instead of a right wing back. Quadrado as well. Uh, and he's another one. Okay, maybe maybe it's like okay, aged coffee doesn't taste good, right? But (laughs) this Quadrado is coming off a pretty damn good campaign with Juventus, no? You know, and and he's shown his versatility. He's shown his ability to uh, really just calm things down and just be a menace when he needs to be on that right wing. And he was that this whole tournament for Colombia, was the leader, was their captain. Um, So Quadrado makes a whole lot of sense. So yeah, left mid Diaz, up top, Messi and Neymar. On the right, uh, you have Quadrado. And, That's and we're a good done. team. That's a good it's team. A, well, and, and I have a question. Who do you think would win? Europe or South America? Europe. 100% Europe. Okay. In my opinion, 100% Europe. Like, we got a strong English team. We got a strong France team. We got a strong, Ger- not very strong German team, but a strong Portuguese team. Yeah. Spain team is underrated. Like Scandinavian teams are getting better by the year, so we got a staggering talent growing. But South yeah, America but too, like I'm looking, looking at, good. Yeah, but I'm looking at these best 11s, right? I'm looking at these best 11s, and yeah, okay, on paper, like like Turkey in the Euros, right? On paper, it might look good, right? But come on, Quadrado, Luis Diaz, Messi, Neymar going up against Harry Maguire, going up against uh, <laughs> Maguire. Yeah. No. Well, what? Well, no, no, no. What I'm talking about is our Euro pick, our Euro 11, and our Copa America 11. Oh, sorry. I, I 